they always go, what brewery do you, do you own? We don't own a brewery, we own a distillery. In 2009, Jim Brozick and Doug Trainer became owners of Nebraska's first legally operated distillery since the days of Prohibition. There's a lot of people in the wine business, a lot of people in the brewing business, but there wasn't that many people in distilling because uh, it's a very hard license to obtain. You must have an operating distillery before they'll give you a license. But it's illegal to own a still. So I asked the federal agent, how can I own a still if we don't have a license and I can't get a license and if I don't have a still? He said, well, we understand. You just kind of close your eyes and go ahead and do it. Jim and myself both have families that think that we were crazy when we first got started. I just listen to all of his ideas and say, uh-huh, uh-huh, sure, honey. He kind of scares me when he wakes up in the middle of the night and says, I have an idea, Carla. It's like, oh boy, here we go. I'm the distiller, Doug is the president. It's a highly competitive business and most craft distilleries produce whiskey but Jim and Doug make Cooper's Chase vodka. Cooper's Chase is kind of a character that really doesn't exist. Cooper, I could say, would be me or Jim, because we're always chasing that next ideal, that next hill. Cooper actually is um, what you call a person that makes barrels. So we're Cooper's Chase. We're chasing our dream. They chose to make vodka because unlike whiskey, it doesn't require aging. But unlike beer and wine, you can't make distilled alcohol at home, legally. There are universities that offer degrees in distillation. But as Jim shared with the federal inspector, that isn't where Jim learned. He looked at me and said, where did you get your degree? And I looked him right in the eyes and said, in the Appalachian Mountains of Virginia, because I wasn't going to lie to him. He kind of looked at me for a minute, lowered his clipboard, and then he started laughing. He said, yeah, we know it goes on. <laughs> After a successful career as a mechanical engineer, Jim retired and moved to Maryland with his wife. Jim was also in moonshine country. I asked, does anybody here make moonshine? Of course, the answer is no. It's a federal crime to make moonshine. But as time passed, Jim got his chance to see a still. I was so curious and so wide-eyed, I didn't care what it looked like. <laughs> it was just a still and, and fun being there. My first thought was, I want to know how they make mash. What grain do you use? How do you ferment grain? I don't care about distilling. Distilling's just boiling water. That would be easy. But I found out as I got deeper and deeper into the hills, anybody can make match. <laughs> it's the distillation that's the trick. That takes a real skill. Jim's thirst for knowledge continued after he and his wife moved to Nebraska. And that's when he was introduced to his future business partner. We sat down at my kitchen table and we didn't even really talk about a business. We talked about distilling. Doug has a day job managing operations at GSC Livestock Yards in Nebraska. Living and working in the heart of the grain belt seems to be a natural fit for making a corn-based alcohol. We have several acres of corn at our fingertips right here. Without going any farther into what we do on a daily basis, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of grain to produce the amount that you need. Chase Vodka is made from corn and malt, not potatoes. 95% of the vodka sold in America today is made from corn. You can buy potato vodka, you can buy rye or wheat vodka, but it's, those are all rare and not the norm. A lot of the startup costs are connected to equipment, but Jim's work experience helps save serious money. With Jim's mechanical engineering knowledge, we built a lot of equipment that would have cost us thousands and thousands of dollars. 
Jim built several prototype stills before creating the one they presently use to make Chase Vodka. We had a sheet metal shop in Norfolk make the copper, and Doug's father-in-law did the welding on the stainless steel tank. We built it right here in this room. We can't show the actual still because, like the recipe, the still design is also kept a secret. There are many other things that go into crafting vodka, but once you get the product in the bottle, you have to get it on the shelf. There are not only many companies making vodka, there are many flavors. You're going against some big boys, and we are a speck that is in their way. We're only allowed to sell to a licensed distributor. In Nebraska, we have a three-tiered system, the maker, the distributor, the retailer. And so far, Chase Vodka is available throughout Nebraska. A lot of people are stunned. A lot of people will say, in Nebraska? And I'll say, yes, out on my farm. Have you heard of us before? Straighter with some cranberry juice. Right. If you're buying vodka someday, remember, made in Nebraska. Doug and I Thank you. go out afternoon. and do samplings, tastings in grocery stores and liquor stores. Make this here in Nebraska. And that's our form of advertising. But now that Cooper's Chase has received multiple awards, that may be changing. We've won a gold medal in Best Vodka in America contest. We entered the big contest in San Francisco. That's the World Spirit Contest. It's like entering your animal to the county fair. You're scared to death. There were 1,612 entries from around the world, and we got a silver medal. When you put a lot of time, heart, sweat, blood, tears into a product, is almost worth all the heartache that you went through to, to receive an award like that because your peers are telling you, hey, you did good.